Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Welcome for the first time. I'm making some tutorial videos around Luminar Neo, which you can find in that playlist there if you'd like to check out some of the other ones. Today's video is all about the catalog function in Luminar Neo. And if you're new to Neo, then this will be a high level overview of how it works. Um, and if you've been with previous versions of Luminar, like Luminar AI or Luminar 4, you'll find that the catalog is operating effectively the same as it did in those versions. So there's not a lot new here for you if you're a previous user of the catalog. But this is really designed for those of you that are kind of new to it. I'm gonna walk through some of the major features and functions and how it operates. But of course, it's impossible to cover every single thing. So the good news is there is a user manual for the previous version of Luminar, Luminar AI. I'll put links down to the catalog sections down below because I am certain I will not cover every question that you may have about how this works. Having said all that, let's get into it. The catalog section you can see on the left-hand side, also this first tab up here. Just make sure you've clicked on catalog. You'll see all these things on the left-hand side. Now, basically, number one, the catalog is optional. If you use Lightroom or something like that and want to use Luminar Neo as a plugin, that's totally fine. It works great that way. You don't have to use the catalog. Also, unlike Lightroom, you're not actually importing photos into some big database file. It's effectively operating as a file browser. So you create, you know, you call it's called adding a folder, but it's basically creating a link between Luminar and the folder that contains whatever photos that you're wanting Luminar to see. It creates a link between them, gives you vis visibility, and allows you to browse those folders and edit them, or I should say edit the photos in those folders. And you can have these photos on multiple drives. So as an example of that, on the left-hand side, you've got this top section here. And these are called shortcuts. In the bottom section, these are folders that you create uh, and or add into Luminar. So the one that I'm on is called Demo Files. And this is just a folder on my desktop that has a bunch of different demo photos in it. And I use these for testing things out, features, functions, doing YouTube videos, things like that. So that is a folder that's on my desktop that just has copies of lots of different photos that I've taken in different places over the years and blah, blah, blah. But secondly, you can also have external drives connected to Luminar Neo. And in this case, you can see all these folders down here on the left, starting with Austin and Europe and things like that. They have a little triangle with an exclamation point. And that means Luminar can't currently see that folder. The reason why is all of the folders that have that mark next to them right now, those are on the external drive. I don't have it turned on, therefore Luminar can't see it. And it says, hey, warning, I can't see the photos in this folder. All I gotta do is turn on the drive and that will go away. Now I'm not gonna do that in this video, but you can see I've got lots of different folders. And the nice thing is you can click on a, if you have nested folders, so like a folder, top level folder with subfolders, like for Europe, for example, I click on that and you can see I've got subfolders below it. So I've got a master Europe folder for all you know various trips I've taken to Europe. And then I organize them based on, for me, it's location and date. And that's something I wanna point out. And that is, if you're gonna be using the catalog, I highly recommend you figure out an organizational system for yourself before you start adding folders. Choose whatever makes most sense for you. A lot of photographers use year and then month and then location or name of shoot. I tend to use location and then date. Pick whatever works for you, it doesn't really matter. But once you do that, you can create nested folders. You can add the top level folder to Luminar and it will pull in these subfolders for you. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Now this section up above is called the shortcut area, where if I click on all photos, you can see that that will show you that I have 237,493 photos in Luminar. Now again, that's a sum of everything that's in all the folders down here below, even though that external hard drive is not turned on, that's how big the library is. And then within that, you can go through and sort things by year and by month and even by date. You can see that I can go in and click in and get a very granular level of detail about the contents of my photo library. There's an on this day function, which tells you specifically on this date in history, how many photos in your library were taken. I've only got two apparently. Um, how many are recently added? That's because I just added a whole bunch of photos to it. And recently edited, if I click on that, these are different photos that I've gone through and edited recently with Luminar Neo. Then you've also got trash, which currently has nothing in it, but I'll explain that in a minute. That's the shortcut section, but what I wanna do is get down here to the folder section, and again, these are the folders that you add to Luminar. Now, on the right-hand side of my screen, you can see I have this folder here. It's called Catalog Demo, and it's a folder on my desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. So I'm gonna click on this plus, 
and I'm gonna go over here to my desktop and I'm gonna grab catalog demo and I'm gonna add folder. As soon as I do that, catalog demo is showing up down here. It shows that I have four photos in it and you can see the four photos are right here. If I open this folder over here, you can see the same four photos are here. And so it's again, just mirroring what's on the drive. To further illustrate that, I can right click and let's say I wanna rename this catalog demo and make it called catalog demo two. I don't know why. Let's just say I wanna do that and I'm gonna add a two. I'm gonna hit enter and you will see that the photo folder over here is now called catalog demo two. But let's say I didn't really like that. I can go over here and in my finder window, I can remove that two, hit enter, and it will reflect that back over here. So it is mirroring what's going on in each folder, whether I'm making the changes in my folder structure on my drive or within Neo. I also, when you right click, you've got a quite few options here, importing images. You can add a new subfolder. So I could call this, you know, sunsets or something, you know, or let's just call it to be edited, to be edited. So, so now I've got this top level folder called catalog demo, and then I've got a subfolder called to be edited. Now over here, you can see I've got my top level folder and to be edited. I don't have anything in it, but I can move stuff into it if I would like to. But this is an example of how you can use folders and subfolders within Luminar Neo. You can also remove this, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna delete that subfolder because I don't really need it. It says the folder is moved to the system trash. You can't undo it. So if you're ever messing around with things like that, I would make sure you don't have any photos in there so that you can make sure you don't lose any photos that you don't wanna lose. And then it just drops me back into the all photos. I'm gonna go back to catalog demo. And now let's say I wanna trash something. I've got this photo here. And let's say I wanna take it to the trash. I can just drag it to the trash and it's in the trash. It is gone from my catalog demo file or folder. And on the right hand side, I've got trash and there it is trash. So you've got the ability to empty your trash can. It's up here in the upper right. If I want to empty the trash can, it says, are you want, are you really sure about this, Jim? Um, and it says it's going to be moved to the system trash. So that's a bit of a fail safe. You can remove it from the folder and it's gone from your folder, but it's in the Luminar trash. So that's a first fail safe. It's not actually gone forever. Even when you empty the Luminar trash, it's moved to your system trash, which is on your computer. So even if I do that, which I'm not gonna do right now, but even if I did that, I could still go retrieve it from my system trash. So again, you have a couple of different fail safes to keep you from accidentally deleting photos forever. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this back from trash to catalog demo. You can now see the trash is empty and catalog demo has four photos in it, including the one that I just brought back from the trash. Now there's a section down here called albums and the difference between folders and albums. Folders are, as the name implies, folders that have photos in them. And these would be again on your system drive or on an external drive or whatever it might be. Whereas albums are basically like virtual groupings of photos. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so I'm back in my demo file folder and I've got a bunch of photos here that I took in Copenhagen years ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight them all so that they're all kind of ready to go. And what I wanna do is basically create an album. So again, it's a virtual collection. So I've highlighted all of them. I can add an album and you can see it drops them in there automatically. And then I can just title this album and I'm gonna call it Copenhagen. Now the thing is, an album, again, is a virtual grouping. These photos could come from multiple folders. It doesn't matter. They don't have to all be in this same demo files folder. If I had one from here that was also from Copenhagen, I could drop that into that as well. In fact, I'll just take this one, which is clearly not Copenhagen. I'll just put it in there. And you can see I'm still in catalog demo, still has those four photos in the folder, including that one. But my album, which is a virtual collection or virtual grouping, now has 11, including this photo, which, hey, by the way, doesn't belong in Copenhagen. That was taken in Texas. So maybe I want to remove from this album. I right click and you can make other adjustments as well. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that from the album and it's gone. But if I go back to my catalog demo folder, it's still there. So again, albums are virtual. And if you delete them from there, they're not getting deleted from the system. And they're also consequently, therefore not ending up in your trash. So while you're in albums, if you right click on the name of that, you've got a couple of different options, renaming that, deleting the album, again, does not delete the photos from Luminar, uh, or add to shortcuts if you wanna drop that up to this top section, which is called shortcuts. Uh, alternatively, here on the folders section, when you right click, you've got a few more options, because again, these are actual folders, whereas 
the album section is it kind of a virtual grouping in this folder as i showed you earlier you can add a subfolder you can show it in the finder you can rename it you can remove it from the catalog things like that so again lots of different options and for me this really just comes down to organizational preferences what i intend to do over time is edit photos here that are in these various folders and as i get my favorites or picks or things like that i can go in and create these virtual albums called albums, but you can think of them as virtual, these virtual collections or albums so that I can take my favorites from, let's say, Copenhagen or a trip to Oregon or whatever it might be. So it's a good way to categorize and group and sort of basically keep yourself organized, which is why at the beginning of the video, I said to get organized in terms of your folder structure first. So you have a logical kind of organizational structure and grouping of your photos. So it's easy for you to find the ones that you want to find. Now, speaking of finding images, there is also some basic search built in. Now, one thing to be clear about is that there's no keywording and things like that. So the catalog is fairly basic in terms of what it does. It's a viewer, basically, allowing you to see photos and get them organized, but no keywording and things like that. So search is somewhat limited, but you can do things like search by file type. If it's got ARW, if I click on that, that is the Sony RAW file extension, and it's going to pull up and try to find these 78,000 photos that I've taken with my Sony cameras over the year. And you can see the date range is from September of 2015, when I got my first Sony camera, up through January of this year. Now it's searching because I don't have the drive connected and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go back to search and show you something else. I can search for all files with Copenhagen in the name, and you can see that I've got three different folders in my Europe folder structure named Copenhagen because I've been there three times. So another reason I like to name by place and date, it's gonna help me find things if I'm looking for them in that way. So that's an overview of how the catalog function works in Luminar Neo. Again, I've got links down below to the Luminar AI user manual that does have some further detail and tips and tricks about using the catalog. But for those of you that are new to Luminar Neo, I wanted to give you kind of a high level overview of how it works. Hope it's answered any questions you may have. And of course, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer. Other than that, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, you guys take care of yourselves and adios.